Site C Summit in Victoria, British Columbia. It's Saturday, January the 27th. Uh, my guest is Jeff Olson. Jeff is with Common Ground Magazine, which is very well known here in British Columbia. Um, so Jeff, we're going to start off with uh, what you think the rationale was, Mr. Horgan's rationale um, for making the decision. Well, his rationale, uh, his explanation really it, it's hard to actually imagine this being a proper functioning rationale because the numbers really just don't add up. The government's own estimate of the debt and how much would it have to be immediately paid would go onto the books. That's been pretty much demonstrated to be wrong. So were they given bad advice or was this a case of they knowingly misled the people on it? That's the question on this. Do you want to go a little bit into the reasons Mr. Horgan gave and how they're wrong. Um, yeah, I, I have to go back to the original video and uh, what he said, but my overall impression was, uh, given the, the recently uh, Freedom of Information Act and uh, uh, the material that has come out um, uh, and, and the uh, statements by Harry Swain, uh, had the commission uh, initially on this, everything about it uh, screamed unfeasible in terms of project uh, returning proper revenue even being necessary and uh, the government's position was they sort of said in his statement Horgan sort of, sort of said well it's a bad project but we have to go ahead with it anyways we have no choice and if British Columbians become aware of what the numbers actually are on this the billions involved and uh, you know some of the other independent uh, estimates of the actual costs that are going to be incurred in this go up to thirty billion dollars over time. Yeah, I would agree. That's what the real number is because not only do mm -hmm. we have to pay for this thing, and it's at ten point seven billion now and going yeah. up, but we also have to pay the interest costs on it. In a yeah, uh, exactly. In a world where interest rates are going up, and mm -hmm. to me. That is really what underlies this whole issue. Mm -hmm. Some very powerful interests for reasons of their own, which have nothing to do with the public interest, want this project to go ahead. So it started yeah. under a liberal government because that's the agenda. The NDP present themselves as the alternative voice, yeah. but when they come to power, surprise, as always seems to happen, the agenda continues. Yeah, it seems to me that be, by design or default you have regulatory capture in the government. So the same thing that uh, process that happens uh, to a degree in the media where corporate interests dominate the, the discussion and the point of view is uh, it appears that the, the uh, government was um, essentially channeling the corporations on this on, uh, you know, on the uh, Site C uh, decision. That's the only way I can sort of make sense of what was happening on this. Either through their advisors, through the, the ministry, uh, ministries themselves, or, um, you know, I would not like to think that uh, Horgan and his cabinet members willfully misled the people. That is a possibility. Um, but we, we constantly hear uh, David Eby and others will say, well, we've been ha we have been advised. Who did the advising exactly? on this, because they did have in cabinet, they had meetings with independent uh, uh, auditors and people who, who gave an opposite opinion that this is not a good approach. So they had a spectrum of people and through the BC Utility Commission hearings, and the BC Utility Commission itself really did not give this a green light. It wasn't exactly. like there was a recommendation in this, this is, this is the, the, the right approach on this is to go ahead. In fact, if you read between the lines, it appears that quite the opposite but it was presented really the opposite way by the government. And by the right? media. And by the to media, the yeah. yeah. The, uh, my and, recollection yeah. of the media coverage, which disappeared after two or three days. Yeah, and the this media, story no. was pushed aside. And there, has been, huge. and there has been uh, no kind of, within you know, the traditional BC publications, there hasn't been a questioning of the numbers and look at the interest and look at the claim of how many billions are, are going to be uh, saved versus spent. Uh, the numbers presented by Horgan are very questionable, um, and uh, only only uh, online uh, vehicles, alternative vehicles like the Tai and uh, D Smog blog, 
they've they've kind of dug dug into this and dug deeply. You but don't even have to dig deeply. It's right you don't there. even have to dig, dig that right deeply. There. That's the thing. You don't have to be in a major. You just have to report, report the truth. truth. <laughs> you just have to look at the numbers as they really are. Yes. And on that front, the the the, me, the media in Vancouver has, or I should say, BC, it completely failed the people on this one. So as a result, most British failed Columbians or I'll ask you this: since you're you're mm -hmm. in the media with Common Ground magazine, which yeah. has a history going back decades. I should point out Common Ground's done a lot of uh, good reporting on, on Sightsee as well. So I add them to desmog and the exactly. as well, I guess. Um, did the media fail us or did they betray us, as they always do, given mm -hmm. the fact that all the media in this province and country are owned by a dozen corporations, which of course are tied into corporate right. Canada, which behind all of this are the ones mm -hmm. who must want Site C to go ahead because they're the, the ones getting the money from it and they have other plans as well. Yeah, fail and betray are, are semantic, semantically related terms. I don't know which you prefer to use, but either one seems worthwhile well, to use. Well, fail for me in is, a lot of, a lot with of the media, fail to me would mean that they tried, but right. they didn't quite get it. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, we, we just got to... Yeah. Betray means that they deliberately... Mm -hmm. mislead the people of this province and country over every important issue yeah, yeah. because it's only the corporate agenda that is allowed to move forward. Yeah, generally, and Chris Hedges has talked about this as well, um, in, in mainstream media outlets, uh, they, they generally distort the truth by omission of facts because they can be caught on glaringly obvious numerical errors and things like that. But even by that measure, um, the numbers were there. Uh, for this project and what would likely be entailed if it was given approval, as it was, but as I, you know, as, as I was saying, um, it's that omission of fact that actually gives a skewed uh, picture of the world to people. Um, and in this case, uh, with Site C, there really has been really no good reporting at it at all in the. Uh, you know, traditional media, the media that most people are familiar with, yeah, the newspapers, all our and the radio, stations, TV radio. stations. I mean, uh, you know, Common Ground and Smog and Tai, they're reaching relatively small numbers of interested people who, have, who are motivated to go on there and, and look these things up. Um, so the, the typical thing that you have on that's sitting next to you on the SkyTrain, you pick up and look at, it's not in there. It's not, a, you know, on the radio where you tune into the CBC, even I haven't heard anything on the CBC on this topic either on Site C. Maybe I just missed it as it uh, came through, but nothing, I haven't heard anything critical, and I pretty much have it on every morning through partly through the day. I mean, so I think that's what we're up against in media is that mm -hmm. uh, the other side controls the media, and we're not going to get until we can build a media, we're not going to get it. I'd just like to finish up with one thing that we touched on earlier. Mm -hmm. um, The idea that is it is it an act? Is it simply that the way our province is run, the people who run the province need a party on the left and they need a party on the right, and we, no matter which way we vote, the same agenda kind of moves ahead. So the question is, yeah. were the NDP misleading us for years because they knew that in the end? their leader, whoever that leader would be, would do as they were told mm -hmm. by the people up top who run the party and the province. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is a very important question. Yeah. Well, there's word that there is going to be a push for massive infrastructure development across northern Canada of apparently over 100 uh, uh, sightseeing type dams. Now, any kind of project of that scale would be years in the making. So that would put Site C within, it would fall within the rubric of a, a larger scale plan overall in terms of energy extraction, sale of energy within Canada. Uh, so that would make, that would make the NDP and the parties going back, they must have had, there must have been some knowledge, some governmental knowledge of what was going on. And again, that that's surely that's surely uh, speculation on my part, but I, I'm increasingly hard pressed to figure out how a government could have made such a bad decision um, with the facts of the ready, unless there's an extremely compelling reason for them to go in the other direction. 
so in the in, against the direction of environmental sustainability power issues uh, fiscal issues the, the and money, aboriginal issues the, the UN disasters. the UN has come out and said about site C, site C in terms of ab aboriginal treaty rights and, and uh, so there's, there's all kinds of uh, elements here that make this so uh, contrary to reason essentially so what is the that that's that becomes the problem what is the um, what were those compelling reasons? What, what forced them to force their hand? If it was that case, for having a case of their hands being forced, yeah, and of course mm -hmm. nobody's telling us. No. no. Uh, Jeff, do you have anything you'd like to just finish off with? Um, no, other than to say that um, I think British Columbians would be aghast if they uh, were aware of the uh, uh, the you know the scale of, of what's happening and uh, how it's potentially going to affect. Um, their day-to-day -day lives down the road, and those of their children, because um, if the deficit, if the debt on this incurred turns out to be as big as, as some independent auditors believe, um, they're going to have difficulty in sustaining uh, social programs and, uh, and and other things that are, we take commonly take for granted now. You mean we'll have to give that money to the debt holders? Yeah, well, sounds like a good plan. Let's buy yeah. some of that debt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks very much for watching.